Hello fellow YouTubers, Mr. Holster here with a great old gun, a Smith & Wesson Model 64. This one happens to be a Model 64-1 with Elkhorn grips. Now Smith & Wesson currently catalogs the Model 64, they still make it. Manufacturer suggested retail is $689 on the current model. It's a little bit different than this, but basically still the same gun. I thought I'd get this gun out today and talk to you about it because I think this is a good choice for a gun to add to your collection or if you're a first time gun buyer and looking at one for home defense and maybe even concealed carry. Granted it's a little heavier than most automatics nowadays for concealed carry but I think it has a lot of advantages in the fact that it's a little heavier too. They kind of outweigh the, the disadvantage of it being heavier. You know, I, I carried for years a Model 66 in uh, Smith & Wesson. Similar model but a 357 versus a 38 Special. Let's look at look at this gun here and, and cover some of the points of interest on it. We'll start with the weight. It weighs 36 ounces. It's 9 inches from the heel of the butt to the front of the barrel. It's 5 inches tall. 5 inches from the bottom of the grip to the top of the sight. The cylinder is your widest point on this gun. It's one and a half inches wide, the cylinder is. So let's compare that to a comparably sized automatic that's popular nowadays, a Glock Model 19. The Glock Model 19 is basically one and an eighth inches in width. So it's slight, this, this gun is slightly wider at its widest point than a Glock 19. Of course, it's considerably narrower in a lot of the other points. Grips considerably smaller. Barrel considerably narrower than the slide. Uh, downside to this is it does have a hammer to contend with where an automatic is smooth and squared off so you don't have that snagging issue. This gun here, the reliability of it and the simplicity of it are outstanding. Uh, Smith & Wesson has been basically making this gun for a long time, starting out Model, model 10, which is the original M&P. This is basically a Model 10 in stainless steel, is what this is. Um, this gun is a great gun to be used for target practice. It would be a good vehicle gun. It uh, certainly could be used for concealed carry. I carried one for years. It makes an excellent home defense gun. The only downside to this in that role as a home defense gun is the fact unlike current automatics it has no rail on the front to hang a flashlight and laser from. Although you can get grips that have a laser, crimson trace grips with a laser on it, and you can use a flashlight in your weak hand. What it does have, and using for a home defense gun, is the ability to train people in your house that aren't certifiable gun nuts like you or I might be, and haven't had a lot of experience with guns, to easily train them how to shoot it safely and well. It's just a lot easier to train people that don't have the interest you and I might have in firearms on how to use a revolver than it is to teach them how to use an automatic safely in a situation where there's going to be stress like a home invasion. This gun shoots 38 specials, which I, I always like to carry or use the 158 grain bullet in 38 Special. I feel that that's an outstanding bullet and a good choice. Uh, downside is, of course, a 38 Special doesn't have the powder charge of a 9mm or 40 Smith & Wesson or a 357 Magnum. But you know, in a home defense roll, what you lo lose in that penetration uh, is might be considered a positive if you worry about over penetration on a shot that's missed going through a wall and hitting your child two rooms over so I debate that that's necessarily a bad thing here
for the home defense situation. Of course, it's a fun gun to shoot, just target shoot. It's a great gun to carry in the woods or out in the field. It would make a good truck gun. You want a gun to keep in your vehicle. A lot of jurisdictions allow you to keep firearms in your vehicle. This would be a good gun for that. You know, the fact that it's heavier makes it not as good a choice as a lot of guns for concealed carry. Now, me, I've always been a big guy, and to carry this gun is not a big issue for me. I've carried a l guns in the past before I retired that were a lot heavier than this. I find this not to be a big deal carrying this gun. Some people might. But when you're using it as a target gun, you're not carrying it. A target gun, a vehicle gun, home defense gun, and not carrying it, that really is, is a positive thing to have it be heavier because it's easier to shoot. It's faster on your target for your subsequent shots. The recoil is not anywhere near as severe as it is in a lighter weight gun. The heavier the gun, the less the recoil. So that's a positive in everything except for the concealed carry. But even then, when you're shooting... When you have to actually shoot it, it's a positive. So, you know, it, it's worth consideration. Great old gun. Of course, Smith & Wesson, the fist, fit and finish on Smith & Wesson's is just outstanding. They've always done a nice job with their fit and finish. And the reliability has, in the years past, always been outstanding. And, of course, that's a positive to this gun is it's been around for a lot of years. Chances are you won't need parts in a last year your lifetime without any issues. But if you do need parts, you should, you should have a good shot at always being able to get the parts you need for this gun just because it's been around forever. Talk about the price. The Smith & Wesson's current model, 64, they're showing it as uh, manufactured just retail of $689 which should put you around $625 in a gun shop, which puts it about $100 more than a comparable Glock. And, of course, this is a six-round cylinder where a Model 19 is going to give you, Glock 19 is going to give you 15 rounds plus one in the chamber, 16 rounds loaded. So it's a little bit of a disadvantage there, and a magazine's a lot easier to reload. Well, not necessarily that much easier, but it's a lot faster to reload than a speed loader. You have to practice quite a bit with speed loaders to, to keep up with somebody with an automatic, especially since when they reload, you got to reload three times to their one, basically. Having gone through gun sight on a revolver while everybody else is using automatics, let me tell you, it's a challenge to keep up. But chances of you needing that many shots when it hits the fan are pretty slim if you look at past shootings in this country. The chances of you needing... Um, that many rounds are slim but then again you know if you do need them you'll wish you had them so that is one downside to the revolver versus the automatic uh, however when you look at a Glock used you're looking basically at $400 I seldom see them for under $400 used in a gun show gun store this, on the other hand, a Model 10 or a Model 64 like this, I have seen them for as low as $300 in excellent working shape. Cosmetically, they weren't too pretty. But mechanically, sound and perfect, lock-up perfect, nothing wrong with them mechanically for $300. So if you're looking at thinking of getting a used gun at that point, I think your Smith & Wesson Model 64 or Model 10, you're going to be able to find something in good shape that's going to be considerably cheaper than the automatic that cost $100 less than this when it's new. So in the used market, at that point, then these end up being a better buy than the automatic. So if you're going to buy new, buy new, it is going to cost you more than the comparable automatic. But if you're going to buy used, you really are looking at a much better value in this gun than a used Glock. So just things to think about. I just thought I'd share this gun with you. It's been a great gun for me. Uh, sure to last till the day I die. Never had a problem with it. Don't think I ever will. Uh, just thought I'd share it with you. Thanks for tuning in. If you like my channel, subscribe. 
and uh, thanks for watching. We'll talk at you later.